ahead on Politics Unplugged. And good evening. I'm political editor Dennis Walsh. This is Politics Unplugged. And with nearly all of the votes counted, Katie Hobbs will be the next governor of Arizona, defeating Republican Carrie Lake. I sat down with Hobbs for an interview earlier this week. Thank you very much for joining us here. Congratulations on the victory. Have you heard uh, from Governor Ducey? Has he called and congratulated you? What have those conversations been like? Yes, the governor reached out yesterday, uh, was very gracious, and is ready to work with my team on a seamless transition to the governor's office. And, you know, I have to ask you about your opponent's response. Um, Carrie Lake hasn't said a whole lot, made a whole lot of appearances, but she did post the tweet that said, Arizonans know BS when they see it. Could I get your response to that? I mean, I think the folks on Twitter who responded to her said it better than I could. Um, the election's over, uh, and I'm ready to get to work for Arizonans. And let's let's talk about that. Getting ready to work. This is a very slim margin. No matter how you cut, no matter where this ends up. Last night, it's under 20,000 votes mm -hmm. at this point. Um, obviously, when you start looking at this, you can you know theorize. It's it's not hard to see that there were Republicans that crossed over that mm -hmm. voted for you. Um, don't know how many. Um, you you can't read this as a mandate. So how does this change your governing philosophy moving into the ninth floor? Um, I don't think anything changes uh, from what I've said the entire time on this race, that I'm running to be governor for all of Arizona. Um, I know we had a lot of Republican support, public Republican support um, in, in this race. Uh, and Arizonans are facing multiple challenges right now. They're not Democrat or Republican challenges. And there are issues like affordability, like protecting our fundamental freedoms that need bipartisan solutions. And, um, and, and we need to bring people together and I'm ready to start doing that. And you, you said protecting fundamental freedoms and what, can you be more specific? What are you looking at that needs to be protected? Uh, uh, abortion, safe and legal abortion in Arizona, our freedom to vote, um, are things that have been under attack and, and are top of the agenda to make sure that we're uh, expanding. And let's talk a little bit about that too, because one of the things, and we'll get to some of those issues too, but let's talk a little bit about the elections. Once again, there's a lot of frustration, a lot of criticism. You know, Maricopa County, Arizona, you know, over the slowness, slowness of the vote count. Mm -hmm. um, you know this issue, you're, you're the Secretary of State right now, you know this issue better than anybody. Is there something that can be done that you would push for a law change, a rule change that could speed up the counting of the votes and address that criticism? Uh, what happened in this election, particularly in Maricopa County, is that um, candidates on the other side were encouraging all of their voters to either vote on election day or turn in their early ballots on election day. And Maricopa County saw an unprecedented number of late early drop-offs on election day, over 100,000 more than they projected. Uh, and so that um, that slowed down the process. But in Arizona, our vote-by-mail system works well. Uh, election officials spend a lot of time ramping up for the election and making sure we're setting expectations clearly of this is how the process works, this is why it takes time. Um, and, uh, and the process worked. We've already made improvements in terms of being able to start tabulating those early ballots 14 days before the actual election. Uh, so everything that was in the door uh, early was able to be tabulated. It's just those late earlies. Um, the systems that are in place to ensure election security and integrity and make sure that every single uh, vote is, is a valid vote, um, those are the systems in place and that's what takes a long time. So it's the folks crying for election integrity um, that are actually undermining it uh, that want to do away with that process. And those are the systems in place to make sure the process works. In another big issue that we saw this year play out, you, know, you look at the polling, one of the top issues, again, in Arizona, as always, is the issue of immigration. Mm -hmm. uh, you're moving into the ninth floor, taking over for Doug Ducey, who by executive order has ordered a bunch of uh, steel containers to be placed in the desert to plug gaps uh, in the border wall. As governor, you could repeal that executive order are you going to do that when you move into the ninth floor? Um, look, I think that uh, we've seen that, that these shipping containers aren't necessarily effective. There's many pictures of people climbing over them, so they're not doing what they're supposed to. Um, they've cost taxpayers millions of dollars. Uh, and now the, the federal government is saying, you need to take remove these. So taxpayers are gonna be embroiled in a legal battle now. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I think we need to look at how we can effectively solve this problem. It's going to be one of the first things I talk to the president about, uh, making sure that we get real solutions for border security uh, to protect our communities in Arizona. So it does sound like you know, when you get in office, you're going to remove those steel containers. I, I'm not going to, I, I don't know the answer to that, uh, but I, I certainly don't think Arizonans need to be embroiled in a legal battle over them. Let's move to education. You know, you're a former state lawmaker, always one of the most important issues in Arizona. Simple reason for it, you're half the budget, the general fund yep. budget is taken up with education spending. Um, you've promised big teacher pay raises mm -hmm. uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, how do you get that through this year? Well, I think first, the, the most critical issue right now is uh, suspending the aggregate expenditure limit, which is handcuffing schools right now. They're not going to be able to budget. We're going to see teacher layoffs if the legislature doesn't repeal that, uh, or, or, or at least suspend it for this year. But we need to look at a permanent repeal because this is uh, a broken record that keeps playing every year. Um, and it's holding us back from investing. The, the legislature made a historic investment this last session with a, a billion new dollars. Uh, the schools can't spend it. We need to take care of that uh, limit. And it, 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 last year we saw it kind of go down to the wire, that aggregate mm -hmm. expenditure limit. Um, you're going to have the power to move up, the, or at least attempt to try to move up the timetable on that. That's something you're going to, I would imagine, want to get done as quickly as possible mm -hmm. once getting into office? Yes, it's top of the agenda. Yeah, and again, I, I keep coming back to the split nature of this legislature, yeah. and it does appear um, that the legislature itself moved and shifted a little bit further to the right. Do you expect to have a good working relationship with them or any working relationship with them to get stuff like this done, like, you know, uh, blowing up the, the, you know, you know, the expenditure cap this year so the schools can get the money that they were promised? And then furthermore, I mean, to repeal that, you would need buy in from the, from from both parties. Um, I will tell you, I've talked to both of the Democratic leaders and they are ready to get to work on bipartisan solutions. Uh, and I'll be reaching out to the newly elected Republican leadership um, as soon as possible to start those conversations. And you brought that up too, like a teacher shortage. Uh, how can you how can you, you know, stem the bleeding of teachers in Arizona? Um, because my understanding and my conversations with some teachers, it's not all about pay. Right. It's about working conditions now, mm -hmm. how everything has become politicized with yep. schools and whatnot. What can be done about that? Um, it, you're exactly right. My two, of, my two sisters are both public school teachers. One of them made the decision not to go back into the classroom this year because of the environment. So I know it's not just about pay. Uh, and we need to stop legislating what... We need to be more focused on how we keep teachers in the classroom uh, versus, you know, focusing on what books we're banning from the classrooms. Um, I think that's critical. And that's right there, kind of the, the, the soundbite of how politicized our classrooms are right now. And, um, and we need to focus on how we solve the challenges. And most parents I talk to on the campaign trail, they're not worried about the books that are in the classroom, they're worried about having a qualified teacher in the classroom. You talked a little bit, you know, in the campaign about housing and affordability out there. What do you think needs to be done? I mean, we've seen, you know, it seems like the housing market is cooling off. The prices, you know, aren't, aren't shooting up like they were, maybe in some instances coming down. But we've seen dramatic increases mm -hmm. in homes. And there is concern that people, if you know, certain ages, they're not going to be able to afford to get into a home if they're not already in one. Is there something your administration is looking at doing? Um, yes, we released uh, our housing plan late in the campaign, uh, but it's clearly something that there's bipartisan interest in. There was a little bit of movement in the last session on some legislation, so I think it's critical to pull people together and talk about ways that the legislature can address housing costs um, in ways that um, that that really um, benefit Arizonans and drive those prices down. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations thank on the you. win again, and thank you for coming here. Thank you.